my favorite wrestler of all time is Mr. Wonderful Paul Orndorff. That's way so, back. That's way back. But he did it different. He had the number one Durful, and you are Mr. Wonderful. That's right, right. Now, didn't he come out of Quebec? Wasn't he out of Montreal? Um, most re- I'm sure he went that way for wrestling. I think during that time, you kind of had to you had to graduate in Canada as a professional right. wrestler before you right. made quote up north. He was from Tampa, Florida originally, but um, my son's grandfather Haku, which was King Tonga in those early days, he was the most popular babyface in Quebec. And then he transitioned down to there. To, they learned how to dance there. It's like a ballet, right? I've wrestled. Well, it's kind of wrestling. It's a, it's a simulated combat with a little bit of flair to it. You got to have a little yeah. dance, a little, you got to know your steps. But um, I was wondering when you fly off the ropes and land on the guy, how do you not hurt him? Like You, you do hurt him. <laughs> it's just, you just try to hurt him in the way that doesn't hurt the next morning. Yeah. So it, I mean, are you taking some of the blow off? You you try to protect. The problem is the closer you ribs, are, the guy was fighting. Everybody, what do you want to crap ribs? For? You whenever you fight your buddies or you simulate combat with your buddies, it's the most dangerous because it's your buddy. Right. So in wrestling, the guys you're closest to are the ones you usually hurt more because you'll throw a punch and you're laughing and joking, having a fun as you do the you know the performance or whatever. But it's usually everything hurts. The only thing that is not scripted is scripted is the finish. But you have to. You can't get people. Can't get hundreds of thousands no, I of get people it, to watch it. Yeah. But it's also the most majestic saying a guy flying off the ropes in the air with right. a big arc. And, and it's good for business because wrestling yeah. started out, and this you'll appreciate this. Guys got tired of beating each other up on the weekends at the carnivals. Like, look, we're losing teeth. Right. We got to do this all year, fellas. Right. So, how can we keep this doing? So, television, money? it took off in the 60s. Yeah. It was happening. We would tell, so, your show, I think, has become is beyond iconic. I think it's even bigger than, I would argue, more people talk about Shark Tank than they do Jeopardy now. Yeah, I agree with that. It's on in 42 countries, too. So, I mean, it's really, it's, no one saw this coming, believe me. Nobody saw this coming. Do you, and you're very, I, I love the term, I, I get souls all the time. You're blunt. I don't look uh, at you I, I don't know I love you as, like, can, comfortably how honest. Else, how like, how you're else? straight up. Like, there's no bullshit. I don't, I always feel like when they, like, you're the, the, the evil one on the show because you ruin dreams. And I'm like, no, I think he tells the truth. He just yeah, not going to massage him. The dreams are going to get ruined anyway. It's like we just—it's it, a really bad idea. You might as well tell them the truth because most of these people um, are going to fail a few times. That's what's going to happen. That's the nature of entrepreneurship. You're probably the best truth for somebody who's trying to get better because if they someone tells you you're good and you're not, or they tell you your product's good and you invest all kinds of money in it and you fail. Wouldn't you rather have that person tell you the truth? Is, yeah, is that difficult? I, I think it's very disingenuous to say, look, I'm not going to give you a dime. When re- and you're thinking your deal's a piece of shit. I'm never right. going to invest in that. But you keep going. You mortgage your house. You get your parents to lend you money. You keep going with this total piece of crap idea. I'd rather say it's a total piece of crap. And you should take it behind the barn and shoot it and try something else. Because you are burning somebody's money. If it's not your own, it's probably your parents. It's whoever you're going after. You've got to fund the losses in the beginning. But I think there's another aspect to this that everybody should think about. Very often you try and make everybody happy. People just have this natural desire to be liked by everybody. It's not possible to make everybody happy. So why? I don't feel you have that, that G to you. I don't think you're very <laughs> I don't, concerned. But I, but I want to take it to a new level. I don't care. I'm not trying to make anybody happy. I'm just trying to make myself, you know, stay to the creed of telling the truth because it's what my mother told me when I was like 15 years old. Always tell the truth. You'll never have to remember what you said. Right. That actually works for me. So I don't worry about who likes it, who doesn't like it. I couldn't care less. And I really don't care. And I think that's when you become free. You're not worried about rating reviews. You don't care. So I just go along my way telling the truth. Some people like it. Some people don't like it. But I want you to know with certainty, I just don't give a shit. Why is that such a dangerous attitude? I think that's the safest, most refreshing way to be. But uh, like I remember you were on CNN and you were basically telling them as a businessman why you wouldn't do business in New York. And they were so offended. And all you were telling them was truth. Why is that so hard for people to take? Yeah, no, I found that very interesting, that narrative. And it remains today as, 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 you know, this whole seizing of assets is coming into narrative in New York, which is very much what happens in Venezuela and Cuba. And so this is not a good look for this great state and this fantastic city. It's getting a lot of people around the world concerned about really what's going on here because, you know, 
forget about Trump. This thing has nothing to do with Trump. This case will go on in case history for years. Long after Trump is gone and long after this attorney general is gone, we're making precedent here. We're taking a law from the 60s that was used to stop people from selling refrigerators at inflated prices and applying it in a new way and stopping an individual, regardless, it doesn't matter if it's Trump, and say, you know, applying, there, there's no money's lost. I mean, I right. understand. So you look at this infraction, you say, what the, what's the penalty? Half a billion dollars? Well, if you have to find half a billion dollars when the biggest bond is 80 or 100 million, how are you going to do that? You can't. And, and don't you think it would be fair for just everybody in New York, regardless of what side of the equation you're on, to, to allow every man and woman to have an appeal? That's what America's about. That's why it's the greatest economy on earth. We have a due process. We, we provide for an appeal, appellate courts. You have to let those people go through that. In this whole thing that's going on, and I've been saying it for you know, a week now, Everybody's waiting for the adult supervision. When are we going to get some adult supervision on this situation? I, I get it. The kids have gone crazy, but this is America. And, and we are the number one economy because we believe in due process. And we believe in law. And capital comes here because it's protected by the courts. It's not stolen by the courts. It's protected by the courts. Right. And, and something got lost in translation in New York City. And I, like everybody else, is just waiting for the adult to show up. And they will show up because this is America. And we'll solve this problem. And whatever penalty has to be paid has to be paid. But what was done there was ludicrous. And and everybody knows that. And I think it's important that we get past this without it having to do with politics. I just think it's bad for the people. This is president. You're not even, you're not defending President Trump. No. You're talking about in terms of, any businessman who was trying to come to New York to do something, especially big buildings or any type of big, would be like crazy because he'd be taken away from you like that if you're on the wrong side of somebody else's agenda. Well, no, when, the, when, when the governor was asked you know, about this, she said, don't worry, we only do this to people we don't like and that don't behave well. well who's that? that? Go, That's a weird meter. That How is do you a, measure that? That did not go well. No. I got to tell you, every developer around the world said, let's just cool our jets until in, in New York until the adults come. Because we've got to find out what's really going to happen here. So right now, I'd say this place is stalled out for a while. Not forever. It's a great city. But right now, while this circus is on and there's no adults, uh, I think it's going to really have capital uh, push away and go to other places. No, so the other thing you did is you gave them alternatives. Like, listen, it's not going to be here, but I would go to a Wisconsin. Or I would go- you gave them other places that businesses would go. They wouldn't have to deal with that. And they got more offended. I, was, I have done that. I yeah, have you- gone. I've gone to- you, You're not bullshitting it. You're walking it. You're talking it. Yeah, like no, no, no. I, is- I would never do a project in upstate New York, even though they got low power. How I can't risk that. The stuff I do is like $3.6 billion data centers, 400 jobs, real com- financial commitment from sovereign wealth funds. They're watching this say, no, 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 no. No, 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 no. We're not doing anything there. Go find me a state like uh, Oklahoma, North Dakota, West Virginia, Montana, well, we can meet the governor and understand what the relationship is going to be for the next 20 years as we deploy the capital. That's the, you know, I'm taking the governor of one of those states over to Sovereign Wealth next week. We're not talking New York here. I mean, I'm here doing this with you in New York because we're not spending $3.6 billion doing this. No, you're expensive, but luckily we got the, <laughs> di- we got the discount. And uh, I don't have my team to try to sell but, my product. I, I am but, confident that there will be adult supervision, that we will get past this. At some point, but I just want to point out to everybody, this is not a good look for New York or the American brand. Remember, we're people watch us all around the world. This is the number one economy on earth. It's getting a little wonky. When someone like you who has what I'd say boots on the ground, you're not a guy who's drawing up math plans telling us how a business could work from a from a standpoint of an educator. You've done it. Like your story, you've built businesses and you give people opportunities what seems like every night at nine o'clock PM on, on my hotel TV, I'll be like, well, there they are giving people opportunities. A person like yourself who doesn't have to do any of this, what drives you to still do it? Cause you don't have to take this shit from anyone. You can literally take your ball, continue to build your empire and not deal with any of this. What makes you still stay on the ground? Because I, I see the, all of a sudden you coming out and just telling the truth, whether you want to, whether the, how you, maybe it's your, because you don't say it with like good more afternoon sweethearts or you make it cute or maybe some nice music, soft music in the background while you say it. Why is it so 
vindictive and venomous for someone like you from all these sides and all these narratives come at you? Why can't you just, I don't need any of this. Like, you just walk away with it. Well, it's a great question. And, and I, I really, um, I'm a big believer in the American dream because that's how, you know, I'm, I'm a, an immigrant from Lebanese Irish parents and middle class and, uh, you know, borrowed money from people to get going. And, I'm, and, and I, I think what happens to you is you have your first big liquidity event and then every, I retired for a few years. I saw every beach on earth. It got really boring. I want to get back in the game and I got back in the game. And then I started investing in entrepreneurs and now I even teach entrepreneurship at, you know, at Harvard. And, I, and so I'm proud to do this. And I don't have a, a political agenda. I, I am a supporter of the American business, which a lot of people forget. Small business in America, defined by companies between five and 500 employees, they represent 62% of jobs created here. This is the essence of what America is about, and they are the economy. And I think it's good if when, when you are given the opportunity to be part of the narrative, which I am, and that uh, we've got to thank Shark Tank for that. I had no idea this would happen. Uh, no one did ever, anybody else. I remember for the first three years, a cat and a dog watched us. I mean, that was it. We got canceled three times. And then when people started to really engage in the American dream, Shark Tank took off. But it, I feel a responsibility now. Um, when I see bullshit, I call it out. I mean, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not concerned about which person's agenda it's part and of you don't strike me as a partisan guy i'm I don't not like oh he's a he's a he's a republican or no, he's, he's a libertarian not. he's a a shrewd a shrewd businessman but you're successful i would want to learn underneath you opposed to someone who gave me a book and said if you do this this and this will happen well how come you have it well i uh, teach I mean, yeah you know my thing is i go to the hill all the time and i get to i get to meet on both sides because everybody knows my agenda is small business i don't have a political bone in my body. I don't have a left wing or a right wing. I don't care. And I'm very, very fortunate to be able to, to talk to politicians about what I want to do. And I, I asked them, look, how do I get from here to there in your, in your constituency? You're the governor of this state. You're the senator. Here's what I want to do. Are you interested in doing this? If not, just tell me, you know, because I have to, you know, I, I work with sovereign wealth funds. I try to find projects that are really interesting, like AI data centers now is something I'm involved in. I can't do that without partnerships with politicians, but they're not all crazy partisan people. Many of them say, I represent the people of my constituency. I'm in a, this state or that state, and I want to create jobs. How, how can you help me create jobs? I say, well, show me the path of least resistance. I, I, I need you to do this. I need you to do that. And we work in a partnership. I don't do that in New York, obviously, because right. but, but and that's too bad because we're in a competition state now. So we, we're getting back to the topic we started with. But here's the key you have to have. You need to have thick skin. You're going to say something controversial. You're going to take a position. 50% of the people are going to be pissed. Yep. And you have to say to yourself, so what? Is it what I believe? I, I'm true to myself. The only person I don't want to piss off is me. Now, they, that may sound narcissistic, but I believe what I say is the truth. I want to be part of the narrative. You don't like my truth? Deal with it. I don't care. Or, or take someone else's direction. But if you want to follow me, my mandate is very simple. I want to create jobs in America. I want to support entrepreneurs. I want to invest in them. I'm not trying to start a new political party. You know, I'm happy to talk to Joe Biden just as I'm happy to talk to Donald Trump. If it makes dollars, it makes sense. Yes. I mean, I want to buy TikTok. I need the... I need okay, the let's go there. Okay. Now, okay, because, you know, Elon Musk obviously got a lot of praise a lot of backlash for what he did with not what is now x when and it's so ironic it's funny that as soon as i heard the tiktok for sale thing i was just joking in the green room and i was like mr wonderful should buy that shit i was just <laughs> and then today it was conspiracy someone like you as a businessman you see the overall good of owning a tiktok since you do the ai stuff but Aren't you concerned a little bit with how we're kind of infringing on free speech? It's not do free speech. I mean, let, let me, let's just take stock of the situation, okay? okay? okay. I, I have two phones. I got a burner phone. It's got TikTok. You have two watches, bro. I do. Yeah, I should have a burner watch. Too. It, I mean, it, it's it, the way I, I, I advertise on TikTok. It's 170 million people just stateside. Yep. Um, for, my, for my businesses, the 5 million uh, small businesses that use it to acquire customers, sell goods and services, 
They spend $9 billion a year. It's the, it's the largest network in America. You should think of it that way. Now, ask yourself a few questions. Let's leave free speech alone for one sec because okay. I'm going to get you there. Okay. But do you think the Chinese would let us have an American version of TikTok in China? No. Okay. So I believe in, re in reciprocal rights in terms of how we treat China. I don't want anything special. If we want to compete in cars, we want to compete in steel, we want to compete on technology, 50-50. Whatever the rules are over there, those are the rules for them over here. I don't want anything special, nothing different. They cheat. They steal. They rip off IP. They take my molds. They knock off my products. They've been doing it for years. I have nothing against the Chinese people. They brought so much to culture and science in the last 2,000 years. It's incredible. I don't trust the Chinese government. And apparently, neither does Congress. So now, this asset, TikTok, this narrative started back in 2020, they tried to sell it three times to an American. And let me give you some precedent, because you're going to remember this. Grinder. There's an app that was controversial. Yep. The minute the Chinese got that control hooks into it, the U.S. government acted and said, I'm sorry, the gender identity of servicemen and women are in that app. We can't have that. You got to domesticate it again. And it happened like that. In India, where there are 200 million people on TikTok, the government tried to negotiate with the Chinese government. Everybody knows they have a back door. If they're stealing data. Everybody knows that. Right. They just turned it off. They shut it off. They, 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 they believed in cognitive warfare. The Chinese were after data about the Indian people. They said, yeah, forget it. Dark. Now, that doesn't have to happen in America. Nothing to do with free speech. I think TikTok's a fantastic network. I'd like to buy it. 170 million people, 5 million small businesses, 9 billion in revenue. 85% of the people on there know who I am. Right. Because they're all entrepreneurs. They're, they want to be Shark Tank. Thank you, Shark Tank. We're going to have to do this transition. we got to take TikTok China and turn it into TikTok USA. Who's the best person to do that? Me. I can do it. The problem I've got is the Chinese will not sell the algorithm. So here are the two stacks of value. 170 million people with a TikTok branch. That's worth something. Okay. Algorithm sitting on servers in China. Chinese government not going to sell them to me. So I have to find out. Remember, without the algorithms, the algorithms I have no preferences from these people, no history from them. I don't know what they bought. I don't know what they like. I have to start from scratch. So if you tell me it's worth $100 billion today with the algorithm, okay, I'll negotiate. But I'm, if, if it's no algorithm and I can just buy the names and the brand, let's start the bidding at $30 billion. It's right. going to be a fire sale. And, and then I'll have to redo the whole thing from scratch. I'll find a great management team. I'll take out all the Chinese back doors. Or if the Chinese government doesn't want to sell it, let's just turn it off. I don't Which care. forces them to come to the table. If they don't want to come to the table, I don't care. All I'm saying is it's got to be the same. Whatever the football field looks like in China, that's what it looks like in America for Chinese people and their government. We've got to be fair with each other. But right now, what I understand about China is they understand the stick. That's all they understand. They understand power. Well, and they want to be number one. That's nice. We're number one. Yeah. And you want to catch up? Yeah. You want to compete? No problem. I'm always happy to compete with anybody. This is the best economy on earth because we have the best system. I don't see a lot of people dying to move to China. Nope. I don't see a river over there with people streaming over and trying to get into China. Nope. That's happening here because this is America. That's where everybody wants to come around the world because of our system. So I say to the Chinese, you understand the stick? You like the stick? We'll give you the stick until we have a level playing field. So I am for either administration, Biden or Trump, whoever ends up with the president, give them the stick. Let's just really give it to them. If there's a tariff over there, same tariff over here. We can't sue for IP over there. You can't sue for it over here. You don't trust our accounting systems on the New York Stock Exchange and NASDAQ, we'll delist you, just like we do an American company. I don't care. That's what they understand. When they understand that- That's easy for me to understand. Yeah, Anyone so why you just broke you it down. want that as a taxpayer in the United States? Yeah. The Chinese dudes- the great supreme leader, whoever he is, is going to say, oh, shit, they're taking it seriously over there. I got to adjust what I'm doing. That looks like a big stick that's hitting me because I got to worry about my economy now. It's not growing at 13%. It's not even growing at 5 And he's going to have a revolution on his hand because he's the supreme leader. He wants to be there for life. Well, they get hungry and they don't have jobs. Not so fast, Bubba Louie. It's going to get pretty nasty over there. And I know that, and so does the American government. So let's give them the stick. This is why you have to serve. Huh. Listen, 
I serve America by funding entrepreneurs. We, congressmen, I mean, 2028, it's wide open. Like, Yeah, no, I mean- it, Businessmen it's, tend to do- I, I think I do a great job advancing the agenda of the American entrepreneur. And I think if you asked American entrepreneurs, regardless of their politics, they would say that guy tells it like it is. Right. They may not like me, but all I want is their respect for what I do. I've said forever, right, ever since I've been on this platform, Americans, we have no problem with bad news. We can take bad news. It's the bullshit we can't live with. It's I like, agree with don't that. take me on a ride. Just tell me my dog died. You know what I mean? Like, just, hey, Fluffy's not coming home, okay? Well, you're, you're absolutely right. Well, I think on things like China, Fluffy ain't coming home. Yeah. And I think we got to start dealing with those guys because they're telling us they are an adversary. They're one of four adversaries we list. Same as North Korea, same as other, you know. I mean, I don't want ever America to lose its path in terms of what it does. For all of the mistakes that people think we make, this is still the number one place that people cross rivers and risk their lives to get right. into. There's no other place like it. So everybody should just suck it up and say, I'm lucky to be here to be part of this incredible economy with all of its faults, including the screwed up New York the way it is, because it'll self-correct. That's the great thing about America. It always self-corrects. Pendulum goes this way, goes back this way, gets back in the middle, and we drive on. Okay. So let me, so I can't get you to at least think about a run in office, because there's been, I've had two guests, you and KT McFarland, who's, oh, she knows, yeah. yeah, I mean, you guys echo each other. But listen, it doesn't mean I can't be involved. I mean, I would, Whichever administration takes over in November, I want to support small business. Any way I can be of help, I'm going to do it. You know what? And I do that now. I walk it. I walk up and down the halls of Congress all the time, and I'm very fortunate because both sides say, "Oh, it's that small business guy." They don't think I'm a left or right guy. No. They don't. They don't think of me that way. That's great. Gives me a lot of freedom, and I'm very fortunate. If I want to talk to the president or I want to talk to Donald Trump, I'm sure. He'll take my call because he knows it's about small business. All right. So let me, the small business is one of the biggest arguments we hear is minimum wage, right? They, they want them to be paid a ridiculous amount of minimum wage. I always looked at when I worked at Arby's and Burger King and my first few Been jobs, there, done that. Yeah. They were not permanent. When I didn't get there, when right. I got my first job, I'm here. This yeah. is it. No, that's you know what I mean? that like, is the I, American with, dream, man. Yep. You did it. And that's just living proof. Anybody can do it. I can do it. You can yeah. do it. So when you hear like they need more money there. I always thought that when I, when I did it, I think it was like I think it was 725 starting. And if you bust your ass in a couple of weeks, I think I got up to like, I was up to 1050. I mean, it was like 1050 an hour. And I thought it was balling out of control until I actually got the check. But it also inspired me. I need to get a better job. Yeah. So what do I got to do to be a manager? And then well, you know, you you're, you're talking about California now, maybe. Oh, no, this was in Nebraska. This yeah. was when I was in school. I was, I got my first uh, fast food job in the summertime or whatever. But I just remember never thinking Oh, I'm, this is where I want to be. Like I'm, I want to be at Arby's. So when I see this this fight over, you don't need to have a thirty dollar an hour minimum wage job. That's not what. Those are jobs to get you your foot in the door and go. It should inspire you to want to go. This this satisfied like just enough to get by kind of a thing, or this um, you know we all pull our stuff together. This socialist progressive attitude of not wanting to seize the day and attack it. Do you see a bigger trend when you're looking at young people coming in to small businesses and stuff like that? They want to open it up. The first thing they think is they're worried about how much they got to pay people, then the insurances, and then on top of that, getting a decent loan, which goes back to what we were talking about in the first place. Mm -hmm. To open a business, you, now you're afraid because if you piss off the wrong person, it can be all taken away from you in literally an afternoon in a court. Well, I'm glad you drifted into this discussion because you're talking about policy. Yeah. So you look at what's going on in California, jacking up the minimum wage, making it almost impossible to start a business in any service industry. And those entrepreneurs simply leave the state and they go to Texas or they go to Tennessee. Look at what's happening in Nashville or go look at, at Florida. The, the competition of states, the way the democracy set up was to encourage the competition of states. And, and we are now starting to realize that because some governors and some states say, well, I don't want to have a state tax. And all of a sudden, a lot more people move there, and then a lot more businesses are started there. And I'm not going to make a minimum wage of $20 an hour because I want to attract business to start to take risk. If you want to be California, you're going to price yourself out of the market at some point. I mean, it's a really nasty place to do business. No, I grew up there. I... Yeah, no, I mean, look, I, I lived there for two months of the year shooting Shark Tank. I watched it decline. I've been boy there for 16 years. 
Look at San Francisco. That place is a war zone. I mean, what happened to San Francisco? I that, got that is just bad speech. management. Yeah. I mean, it's a combination of a really weak leader as a governor and a horrific mayor. I mean, I'm sorry. That's the truth. If you live there and you're paying taxes, you, you must ask yourself, what happened to us? You know, and I think that's really what this is about is, is starting to ask more from leadership. You know, I, I look at AOC, what an incredible, incredibly successful politician she is and what a horrific manager she is. Her, her jurisdiction looks like a third world country. And, and yet she's great at social media and, and making outrageous statements and getting five dollars at a time on, you know, every way she can on social. Good for her. But wow, look what she did when Amazon came knocking for ten thousand. Yeah, that to me blew my mind. How does that I mean, you survive? So, so why would you want to reward that? Why wouldn't you say, "Excuse me, could I get better management, please? I live here, I pay taxes here, and I'd like a job. And I don't think you're doing a great job for me as a manager. How about I hire somebody else? That's what I would encourage. Not that she isn't just great as a politician. There are countries that have weak leaders. There are states that have bad governors. I think people, the great thing about democracy is say, we can do better. Right. Putting up my head, let's do better. Do you think you, as you talk, I get this, not personal, it's just business. Just business. But everything is personal now. No, not for me. I mean, you what you did right there is you gave her a compliment in terms of her, her showmanship and how she does well on social media and she's her, she used her platform and then you criticized the deed. You're like, she's you lost. Manager. Yeah, you're not. And, well, that which, should be, which, but which that one makes you, it? there's a lot of words I could throw. Well, I, I agree it. with you. I'll say it with you. I'll say it. I don't. I'm like, who voted for this? And you can see it across the board. You can see it. It doesn't have to be AOC. We, you could take it at a re well, super Republican a guy. Example. Yeah, but she's which, a perfect example of cares I about the that camera. wasn't true? Is she a great Nothing. Well, she's a great politician. Let's celebrate that. Is she a bad manager? 100%. She's terrible. They're both true. They so if both she was true. a business. I wouldn't. Have you, would you, <laughs> would you pass? Would she, would, no, on let, Shark Tank, let would she me be a specific. Yeah. I wouldn't let her manage a candy store. Wow. I mean, you know, yeah. I, I once did a TikTok with her. Maybe it was an Instagram. I can't remember. Where I, I showed the gross margin on her T-shirt sales that say, tax the rich. I love that T-shirt. Yeah. I give them out as gifts. She's making 85%. And my point was, for every socialist, there's a capitalist screaming to get out. Yes. He's profiting on that thing. Well, isn't that how it always works? Well, but we'll keep hope. in charge of the money and we'll make sure that we have nice things and everyone gets a little. Because socialism is really, it's about, I don't want to share. It's no, selfish. No, I, I, it's, I, the top don't want to share. They keep it. They get fat. And then they distribute and everyone is dependent on them. That's, it's not about we're all the same because you never, I've yet to see, even like Bernie Sanders, who's super is about socialism. Yeah, he's got three mansions. So those aren't the people's mansions. Those aren't spread out amongst them. Because that goes against the very definition of what it is to be a socialist. But you're right. They're all capitalists, but because they they're feel, they feel like they care about everybody else is different. And that's that's why you get guff is not is you're, you're a truth teller unapologetically. Oh, look, I, I, I think Bernie, and that didn't used to be a sin. That used to be you would be you have this great wisdom. And so people would come seek you out. Like, listen, I'm saying this start for a moment of your time, sir. Where you hear what I have to say now is like this guy's bully. He's a thug. Look no. out. Tell I have, I have millions of people who follow me. I'm proud to just be part of the narrative. I think Bernie is another masterful politician. Four-day work week? What is he, crazy? Like, that's beyond un-American. That's insane. We have to compete all around the world. Entrepreneurs don't work five days. They work eight days a week, 25 hours a day. Yeah, if you're your own boss. That's a so third you, of yeah, America. Yeah. That's, that's the American dream. That's 30% of the population, minimum, 33%. They want the American dream. That's why they're here. They don't listen to Bernie. No. I'm not saying Bernie's a bad guy. Elizabeth Warren, fantastic politician. I would have dinner with any of them. I would love to talk to You just politics. wouldn't give them the keys to your factory. Not a chance in hell would I do that. <laughs> like, but the, the, whole but point, the point is, they're good people. They're not bad people. They're just bad policy. And, 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 and we should have a narrative about policy. That's what this election is going to be about. It's not going to be about personality. It's going to be about policy. Border security, energy security, taxation, foreign policy. We only got eight months left. Let's hear the ideas from both sides. Let's go. Let's hear the policy. Infrastructure. Everyone has to go to college. Not true. Not true. Is, does there need to be a reinvestment in this country in trade school? Well, Do we need to start investing in electricity? You can make a ton of money if you're a good plumber. And then you start managing other plumbers. Great welder, great electrician. 
This country needs infrastructure in perpetuity. These are great tradespeople. They're very smart entrepreneurs. You don't need to go to college to make money. You look at half of my entrepreneurs I invest in. <laughs> I don't ask them where they went to college. I don't care where they went to college. I don't care what the name of their football team was or their dog's name. I don't care. What can you do to take this business plan and execute on it? Can you do that? Can you pivot? Can you read the market? Can you do what it takes to lead people that are going to trust you to take them to the next level and, and put their career in your hands? That has nothing to do with college. Zero. I don't think there's anything wrong with going to college. I think it's great the people you meet. I teach at colleges. I think it's wonderful. But that does not determine who's going to be successful as an entrepreneur. Right. Who's it has dog nothing to do with it. Our education system, right? Because that's what we see. Like wood shop's gone. Uh, mechanic, auto mechanic stuff's gone. Music, music's I hate gone. It. I hate that the high schools don't have instruments. I hate that music's the other side of the brain that makes you a great entrepreneur. You got to have it. I keep making because I look at uh, as a former teacher. I always had problems with dealing with the union, right? The tenure and all that stuff. And now there's this big homeschool push, right? Because half my kids are homeschooled now because I didn't like nothing wrong with that. Nothing at all. Then I was like, why are we not seeing private pack practice education where a teacher gets together with a community and like maybe it's two streets and we start getting back to instead of just having individual homeschooling, we have community homeschooling. It goes back to like Little House in the Prairie. You had one little school, one teacher. You had 15 kids and they taught every and they got it all done and still had time to go work back in the farm with to get back to where our kids can use their hands or have a skill set or be able to have a real art form to fall back on. As a businessman, throw ball is do you think there's a path for that? That there could be a private practice in terms of you have private we have private schools and we have private teachers and kids are that we can have where we're not everyone's available to like I have to work 40 hours, my wife works 40 hours, but our community has a private school. Do you think there's a path for that? I, I look that's just hundred percent. I mean I, I grew up in the educational market with learning company. We sold that was my first big deal. 4.2 billion exit. We just did math and reading scores. There's 110,000 schools in America. We can't fire poor teachers. And I could tell which math. ones were poor because I could see the math and reading scores based on that teacher's performance. It's one of the, the most screwed up systems we've got. If you can't perform, if you can't advance that student, we should be able to fire you. And we should be able to pay the good teachers more so they advance. And, and we should attract more. Teaching so important. But what you're talking about makes 100% sense to me. I mean, look, if you want to take that on your own hands and teach your children because in your beliefs and advance in math and reading, which you need in this society to go into college if you wish to, you have to advance those scores. But our educational system is broken because we don't reward good teachers and no. we can't fire bad ones. It's that simple. And I saw it with my own eyes and it hasn't been fixed since I left decades ago. It needs to be fixed. And I think it's a huge debate because our scores in math and reading, when com compared with the G7, we're falling behind. And this is America. Right. That's not good. And so other countries have figured it out. We've got to do the same thing. But you've pointed out something very, I mean, there's so many verticals to discuss about what we can fix. And that's the whole point. You want to fix those because they're low hanging fruit in terms right. of doing it. You got unions, you got other issues, and sometimes it's politics. But rewarding a teacher that does not advance a child's education, to me, that's a sin. Like that is supporting somebody who just doesn't care. Right. And, and you, I mean, imagine the frustration of a parent that has to deal with a teacher like that and knows with certainty that teacher doesn't give a shit about their kid. I mean, that just to me is horrific. Because yeah, I can remember, you could always tell the teachers who gave a damn back in the day of growing up and stuff. As a teacher, I was going broke because I was spending so much money on stuff for my classroom. Because, and I'm learning from well, really good teachers. I'm glad you experienced that because you know exactly what we're talking yeah, about. Yeah, where the, the teachers are put, the good teachers. And you dealt with so parents, much. right? Oh, They'd yeah. ask you, yeah. like, what are we doing? Why what is, is Johnny having a problem? Maybe he's got dyslexia. Maybe he's got ADD. Maybe we can work with him in this. Maybe we can do that. You know that as a teacher. I'm dyslexic. Thank goodness I had a teacher that cared. I'm dyslexic also. Yeah, listen, it's not a curse. It's a No, it's really power. not, no. No, I what it is. Listen, I really enjoy this. You're, you're the real deal. So, I mean, oh, you know, thank you. this is something you should pursue because you're very good at it. I get interviewed a lot. Not everybody's good as you. And I never say that. Let's wow, thank you. You're, I, 
You were one of those guys today that Look was- Look at your pivot from one topic to another. That's fantastic. Well, thank you, boss. No, and at least, and they have some continuity to them. That's not easy to do. No, it's not. You hear that, fellas? 